Hello there all, welcome back to another video. In the previous one, we went about creating this very simple table model in Houdini. In this video, I want to take some time and talk about the procedural nature of Houdini's workflow and what's the benefit of that. So to understand procedurality, let me start with the simple analogy of making some fruit juice. So let's say we start by picking a particular fruit. So let's say this circle is supposed to be an apple. Yeah, that probably is a hybrid spherical apple. So once we have this apple, we probably would have to start by slicing it up. So we have slices of this apple and then we'll have to put that into a juicer. So we put the slices of the apple inside it, probably some milk and also some sugar. Once you have added all of this in, we finally get the result that in a glass we can start filling it up with the juice. Now, let's consider each one of these as a different step in the process. Now, once we have completed the juice and let's say we start serving it out, we figure out that there are loads of people who don't actually like apples or there might be people who are lactose intolerant or there might be other people who are diabetic which means either we had to go back chain the fruit which we actually chose which is the first step uh, if they're lactose intolerant we'll have to get rid of the milk if they're diabetic we'll have to get rid of the sugar or one of the other things so if we are actually in real life we'll have to go ahead and do the whole thing all over again but if we are doing the same thing in Houdini instead, each one of these operations is a single node. All you have to do is, if you want to change the final output, go back to the step previous and change something. So let's say I don't want the uh, juice to have any milk. I go back to this particular step and just tell I don't want milk or probably replace this with water. Next, I don't want uh, the diabetic to have sugar. I can go back to the same step again, get rid of the sugar, use some artificial sweeteners. Let's say they don't want apple itself. I go back to the first step, change it from apple to any other fruit and once I have done that, obviously let's say if I change it to something like an orange, then the second step, which is cutting off the apple, also needs to have a particular section where I slice or actually peel off the orange. So depending on the different things I want as a result, I can go back to different nodes and change the operations which are involved. So I know this is a very random example, but let's actually go into Houdini and see all of this in action. Okay, so now back in Houdini, let's see what I meant by the procedural approach. Here in the node editor, let me just walk you through the basics of what we had done last time. So here, we started by the, the basic top, which is nothing but a simple grid. We added a little bit of thickness to this. Then we added a little bit more of extra width and uh, length so that this actually sits a bit outside the actual legs themselves. Now once that was done, we also took the actual cross section of the leg, added a bit of height to them and then copied them all over to every single part of the table, merged them all together. So this was the table we had. Now let us say that uh, after creating the table, the director or whoever else is there comes in and tells us that they don't want a rectangular table, they wanted a circular table. What do we do? Well pretty easy, I just go here to the top, I type in a circle. I take in a circular object, I'll press P to open the properties right here in the network view. I'll convert this into a polygon object because all these processes are connected to a polygon object. And uh, if I enable the display on this, you can see it's actually sitting cross on the construction plane. So I'm just going to make it sit flat on the construction plane, probably increase the radius a little. Okay, and now once I've done this, if I connect all of these nodes directly by just clicking on the line and connecting it to my circle, you'll see that if I go to the thickness, the thickness operation is applied to this particular circle now. And uh, there are a couple of issues because it's now applying the thickness in reverse, but we'll get to that. Then we have a polygon extrude which is giving the size on the sides. And then finally, if we come back to the merge, you can see the legs are coming in, but obviously they are wrong because they are connected from the actual top base, which is a rectangular object. So what I want to do is again reconnect this to the circle. So now if I go back to my copy, the circle is the one copying the legs all over itself. And if I come back to my merge, you can see the circular table with loads of legs. Obviously we might want to reduce the number of legs so I can go ahead and change that. Uh, but it also changes the circle a little, but there are other ways around it, which we'll talk about later. 
So as you can see, I can easily go ahead and swap the top of the table, but I did not have to redo the entire model to get back to this level. And that is the benefit of having a procedural approach. Whatever you do, in the end, you finally end up with a model which you have a lot of control over. But the downside to this is that you'll have a lot of nodes that you'll have to work with. So let me go ahead and start with a simple example of something else I had created. So let me open up a different file. Okay, so this should be good. Okay, so here I basically have this uh, very simple object which is traveling over ground. So let me put that on flat shaded. Okay, so if I go back and hit play, I have the simple tank tracks which are traveling over the ground. As you can see, they follow the contours of the ground, the track sticks to the ground, and a lot of those nice details are going across. And here is a node network which I've created to actually produce this. And the main tank tracks are coming in from here, and you can see it has a lot of options. And the best thing about creating it like this in Houdini is that now I can again go back and tell I want the tank tracks to be longer. And when I increase it, you can see the number of gears or these wheels in the center actually increase. And when I decrease it, even they decrease. Not only that, I can tell I want to change the number of divisions or the number of these tank threads as much as I want. So that also works. Oops. Yeah, that also works. And it actually still conforms to the whole geometry. I can change the radius of these guys. I can change the width of the entire tracks so I can make it really small or really large and all of this is done procedurally and this is what we're going to try and learn and as I said it might turn a little bit more complicated at, after a little while because as you can see if I double click here this is a node network I've used to actually create these tank threads and most of the networks here are also in built with additional node networks so they actually have many things inside each other so it might get complicated and someone actually asked me what's the point of it all well first off it gives you control it gives you a lot of control on the different things you can do and once you have created it it's like an asset you can always reuse it wherever you are in any scene you are not only that um, the main uh, thing for me personally is that it's interesting you get to have this logical thought process of understanding how things work and once you understand that even when you are in other softwares it helps you create much better workflows so anyway we'll look at all of that later on uh, this uh, video was only about trying to help you understand what exactly a procedural workflow is like so here you can see I just had a simple tank thread it goes across the ground I can change the length of it width of it and anything else I want and still it goes across the same ground and it has absolutely no problems following the contours and all of those elements and it gives me all the details the way I want them so that's procedural so that's it for this particular video in the next video we'll go ahead and try to convert the actual table we have into a procedural model so that we can change the height width and length of it so till then if you have any doubts critics comments or suggestions please put them in the comment section and I'll definitely get back to you so till then, I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.